In this video, we will be making a progress bar to graphically represent how far into the obby the player is. To get started, we will go to start a GUI and we will add a frame to the screen GUI. We will rename this to progress bar. This will be part of the progress bar that hasn't been filled yet. So whatever, when we fill the progress bar, you think there's going to be a background and there's going to be a color which overlays which may be green for example and it will get filled so as you can see as we complete more levels this is going to get filled and the background will be this uh, white color here i'm going to give it the size it's going to be a bit random because i've already predefined it 0 0.407 comma 0 comma 0 0.038 comma 0 bit of a random size but this is one that i used in my dimension obby game and I'm now going to drag it into the center here at the bottom of the screen. I might actually make it a little bit thicker, just so we've got a bit more at the bottom. Though. Next, we'll add another frame to the screen GUI, in fact, to the progress bar. I'm going to right-click and rename this frame to just bar. I'll give it a blue background color to match our skip stage button. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll go to our button and copy the background color free, and then paste it into our bar frame. I'll give it the size 1, 0, 1, 0 just so it matches the same size as its parent, the progress bar frame. Now you can see as it fills how it would sort of start looking. Next, we'll add a text label to the bar frame, and I'm going to rename this to indicator. This will display in text what stage the player is on and how many levels are in the obby. I will give it the size 1, 0, 1, 0 to match again the scale of the progress bar frame, which is its parent. This text label should be in a progress bar, not the actual bar. Uh, so these two should be separate. I just accidentally made this a child. Uh, it should be a child of the progress bar, not the bar, just like you see here. Next, I'm going to scroll down to the text and make sure the text color free is white. And I'm going to make the text say, actually I will give the text a stroke as well, just because you can't see it at the minute on white, on a white background. Uh, so by giving it a stroke, it allows us to see it there. I make this say progress colon zero out of zero just by default that's going to be the value i give it i might actually increase the text I'll, I'll click text scaled um and i'll just play around with the font and stuff so what i've done is i've given it that fredoka one font which i did with the skip stage button uh, i've made the text scale and i've added a ui text size constraint which allows me to give it a maximum size of i've put 32 and a minimum size of 12. this just means that when we scale the screen size it does resize the text, but only down to a minimum of 12. We will be changing this text in a local script. So let's now create a local script inside of the progress bar frame. So let's add a local script. And to get started in this script, I'll say local player equals game dot players dot local player because we want to get the player and store it in a variable. Next, I'll say local leader stats equals player colon wait for child and then leader stats all in lowercase. This will get the leader stats and store it in a variable. We use wait for child because we want to wait for the leader stats folder to exist within the player. Otherwise we might get some errors thrown and the game might not work how we want it to. Next we'll say local indicator equals script.parent.indicator. Next we want to get the bar, so we'll say local bar equals script.parent.bar. And now we want to get the maximum number of stages in the game. So local max stages equals hashtag workspace dot checkpoints colon get children. This will get the number of checkpoints in the game. This means the number of stages. And just remember hashtag means the number of. We, I'm just using local here because I find it good habit to use local variables in local scripts. Just because they can't be global in the first place. But we don't actually need these locals here. It's a good habit to use local variables or to define a variable as local within your local script. Just because they can't be global, their only option is to be local. Uh, not everyone will have it though. Some people won't use the local, but because it's a local script, I like to put the local keyword before each variable identifier, variable name. Next, we'll say while wait one do. And this will repeat any code in here every second for as long as the program runs the reason i'm using a second is because i don't want to update the progress bar every frame or every single 
uh, cycle of the code because that gets quite demanding. Uh, it's just unnecessary work. We don't need to update a progress frame every single you know millionth of a second, a thousandth of a second. We can just check it every second. We don't need to do it all the time. Now here's where we want to resize the frame. So we can say bar dot size equals udim two dot new. That's capital U capital D. In brackets one divided by open brackets max stages divided by leader stats dot stage dot value close brackets comma zero comma one comma zero close brackets again this changes the size of the bar to show him how many stages the player has completed like we saw earlier when i was changing the blue bit udim 2 dot new creates a brand new two-dimensional value uh, relative to a scale and offset for an x and y axis so our first item here in this first parameter, our first argument is the x scale. The second argument is the x offset. The third argument is the y scale. And the fourth argument is the y offset. This allows us to change the size in terms of offset and scale. This value for the x scale sets the value of the scale to 1 divided by the number of stages the player has completed as a fraction of the total stages in the game. For example, say leader stats dot stage dot value was 32 and the maximum number of stages in the game is 80, the bar's x scale value will be equal to 1 over 80 over 32, which is the same as 32 over 80, which equals 0 0.4. So the x scale value will be 0 0.4 or 40% filled. Next we can say indicator dot text equals and then we want progress colon dot dot leader stats dot stage dot value dot dot forward slash dot dot max stages the dot dot is just how we can append a variables value to a string and this sets the indicator text to the number of stages completed out of the number of stages in the game okay and now we can test it so let's hit test and play and we'll keep an eye on our output and make sure there's no errors nothing yet it says progress one out of eight so that's perfect because we have eight stages so let's uh, do some jumping. We'll go over to stage two and it says two out of eight. Uh, now, for some reason, the size hasn't changed of the progress bar. Let's have a look at why that could be. There's no errors in the output, but the size isn't changing. So let's have a look. OK, so the reason that the size is changing, but the reason we can't see it is because our indicator text uh, has a background and it's placing it over the top of our progress bar. So we need to go to the background color free of our indicator text and make the background transparency one. And now we should be able to hit test and play and be able to see the progress bar work. There we go. So it says one out of eight. Let's do some jumping. There we go. It should start Yeah, two out of eight. So it's not instant. Obviously, it does wait that second. If you want it to be instant, you can remove the one in the while wait do and then it will just do it. I think the defaults like 0 0.03 seconds. But you can see that it does start to work really well. And if we skip stage as well, it should work. Yep, 6 out of 8. Perfect. So that is the progress bar. That's it. We could add a couple more things just to make it look nice. So we could add, for example, a UI corner to each of our elements. So the progress bar, the bar, and the indicator. But that is it for this video, everyone. I hope you found it helpful. In the next video, we will make a data store system to save and load our data. That is the last video I have planned for the series. If you have any more suggestions for this series, please let me know by filling out the video suggestion form in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.